If we're thinking of a marriage partner, then there has to be something that both feel appreciated for as regards the marriage. Now, I mean, in a worldly sense, she may be absolutely beautiful, so she feels quite secure in that she knows she's what he needs. He's not beautiful, but on the other hand, he might be prosperous or able to earn a good living or in some sense extremely helpful, capable, you know, sort of construction type man. And so he knows he's of value to her in the marriage. If she wants a family, he can provide the home. In that purely secular situation, the uh, looks of the woman will deteriorate after a certain number of years and she will hopefully be secure now in the relationship that they've struck up with each other. His um, usefulness may continue, although he too may of course be um, less capable than he used to be. But generally the usefulness of the man lasts. Now, if we're thinking of uh, uh, and he, therefore he knows his security is there in some sense. And he too, of course, is increasingly turning to the fact that they've been good to each other. They've made a family together and they owe a lot to each other. It's, it's been life together and, and the thought of life without each other would just be a vacuum, be awful. That's in some sense the ideal given secularity. If on the other hand we're talking about spiritual couple, well, each of them sees in the other something of God. Now, he of course being a fellow will still see beauty in her, but he may not particularly marry for looks. I didn't marry for looks with my first wife. I married her because she was a superwoman. And, yeah. Now, um, of course, these qualities could change. It's conceivable that you come to a point in life where you drop these qualities, but it's, it's in general not likely. Um, you know, the man who's of integrity and so on remains of integrity and uh, honesty and so forth. I mean, if he has physical needs, which his wife's not meeting, well, of course, that might be a problem. And equally, of course, might be the same for her. And that situation could well tempt either of them away. And uh, in some sense we think of it deteriorating back to a, a semi-secular marriage that's in trouble. Now, a secular man, like myself with my first wife, I was secular really, well, it's, it's moving, but, um, you know, could still find admirable qualities in the um, in the woman, and marry her for those, and equally, um, the secular woman might see admirable qualities in the man: integrity, honesty, faithfulness, and oh, she appreciates that. In other words, she isn't necessarily you know a committed something or other religious follower, but she um, uh, and he can still have an appreciation of the qualities of the other person. It may not be their looks, and it may not be their um, ability to um, provide the home. You may provide the home in other ways, or it's just possible that the woman's income with the man's is enough, or you know the woman is uh, the earner and the husband becomes the house husband. And I've spent much of my life as house husband. Uh, different sorts of reasons, but um, I've worked most of my life part-time, I think it's still most, yeah, and um, full-time very little indeed. I mean a few years, but not, not a, anything like as much as part-time. And my respective wife at any one time has uh, um, yeah, been working part-time as well. 
in that situation because they have had the role of being mum, which is a bit more demanding than the role of being dad. I've been um, house husband to take over some of the mum chores and so on. In my particular case, all three wives have um, become unchristian at some point, pretty close to deciding to um, break the marriage and go. So, I mean, marriage length of time was 18 years, 18 years and seven. Well, seven, effectively. It might have gone on a bit longer waiting for the divorce to come to me, but, you know. So for 43 years of my life, I've been with a married partner. Um, with a partner, with a wife. Now, of course, becoming secular did change the um, uh, qualities um, that the uh, wife had. And, um, but there was a commitment on my part and uh, a history of love such that in gratitude and relationship and love, I was not willing to break. And, uh, you know, divorce happened to me against my will in each case. And I know in my heart, if there was any serious need, um, I'd want to come to the rescue of any one of them. Whether they would want to do the same, I suspect, might be a bit more doubtful because um, uh, they have changed values. Second two wives are definitely secular now. The first wife, hmm, damaged anyway. I'm not sure. And strangely, it's the first wife that will have least to do with me. Coming back to the marriage situation, it's important for a marriage that each has something that the other values and that each knows that the other values them for it. Um, you know, that my wives have, when things were good, which they were most of the time, um, been with me, they've always held a high opinion of me. Um, you know, integrity, honesty, kindness, um, and so forth. Thanks. They, they know is my character, and uh, I've felt that of them too. Faithfulness until they weren't, if you like. Um, and even then, well, hmm, you, you find excuses for your partner if you love them, don't you? That's the thing. All three of them clearly stepped out of love with me. I mean, in order to, um, I mean, else they would not have divorced. Whether they're still out of love, well, the first one is. Um, second and third, third one comes and goes, but that's a bit near, she only left five years ago. Um, the second one, no, nah, she's still caring towards me. She's recovered somewhat, although she is secular. This doesn't mean to say she has no fine qualities, she has. Um, and perhaps not uh, uh, such that you would say she was Christian, though, or, or religious of some sort. If uh, you want to leave open the possibility of a person loving you, remind them that you see good qualities in them, that you value them for the following reasons. You know, their integrity, their kindness, their love, their care, their um, industriousness, their ability to um, earn a living, uh, their ability to make such a lovely family, their caring for kids, um, 
the way you can rely on them, um, you know, every quality you see in them, you let them know, you value them for that reason. And uh, hopefully you love them for that too. If I know you think well of me and you value me, well, there's not many people that value you much in life, not for long periods of time. So, you don't get rid of such a friend lightly. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8 is, you know, love is patient, love is kind, and so on. It's a typical marriage text, isn't it? And uh, rather lovely. I've not checked it. I only really know the King James Version, but the vision text might be something. I think I'll check that in a minute. Thank you, Heavenly Father.